welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Santo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. School's out for season. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, how are you doing, man? I'm well. How about yourself? Um, as the audience at home can listen, my voice is not up to par. But the way that this episode comes out is going to make it all confusing. And it sounds like I may be sick for three weeks or more. <laughs> That's not quite what I would giggle about. Like, you're like, I've got to be sick for three weeks or more. No, I man, hate it, the it's, world. It's just an illusion. <laughs> it's just an illusion. But anywho, today we'll be reviewing Season 8, Episode 25 and 26, School Race Episode 1. And, sorry, School Race Part 1 and Part 2. In this first part, the magic of Equestria my- mysteriously begins to fail and Twilight Sparkle leads her friends on a quest for answers, leaving the school of friendship open to attack from a dangerous mastermind. Ooh, scary. So before we start, first impressions are in order. Are we doing just first impressions of part one? Uh, um, um, how, how, how do you want to do this? Because um, scene by scene, we'll go fast, but... Um, First impressions for part one? Yeah, why not? Let's go Let's go with that. All right, first impression of part uno. Well, it was intriguing. I mean, you have this grand mystery, this danger. You have, once again, Yona getting traumatized because that's a thing now. But basically, I think it was a good mystery. But as it builds up, you start to realize, well, you kind of say that you want to scream at the uh, ponies. She's the one! She did it! Evil! And that's the trouble with dramatic irony. Too much of it, and suddenly you're not uh, tense for your lead characters. You're wondering, how are you not seeing this, you bozos? <laughs> but also, they kind of threw a red herring at us by revealing that someone else might be the villain. Ooh. Well, we can get into that during the good old, uh, g- during the actual discussion. True, 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 true. But anywho, as for me, uh, this episode was a lot of fun. I... I highly enjoy the whole scene where um, all of the magics are gone, a Twilight have to group up her friends and try to solve the problem, and at the same time too, um, the interaction between the characters are a lot of fun, and I'm not gonna go into spoilers and talk about what I really like and dislike, because um, the whole thing about this series or this episode is the reveal, the interaction. And if I were to say things now, it'll kind of cheapen the moment and reveal. But anywho, um, if you guys have not watched this yet, uh, pause here and go watch it. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy the episode. And yes, uh, we are going right in. So anywho, we start off our Adventure with Derpy! 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 10 out of 10, already best episode ever. I know. Thank you, <laughs> but uh, we, we may have to minus a point because we see Cozy Glow. Uh, and Cozy Glow is awesome, like helping the ponies, keeping the school clean and whatnot. And also um, helping Raffle win the number one, Rainbow Harmony. <laughs> Evil! Evil! <laughs> hey, that's not nice, man. Like, Rainbow Harmony is a good kid. I'll have to take your word for it so she doesn't say a line. <laughs> because she's a raffle winner. Uh, remember that one at Hascon? Oh, I'm I'm very well aware because the other winner was my bud, the illustrious Q. Oh, man, I heard of that. Like, how, what is it, raffle? How? how? They were attending a special dinner and that was just one of the prizes given out. Wow. Really now? Special dinner at Hascon or? Yes. Hascon, really? Huh? And wait, it's Trusty Splendor, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's the name. Oh, huh, okay. That, that is cool. That is cool. Yeah. Oh, man, I wish I was there and I could put in my chocolate old scene. <laughs> yep, it's Trusty Splendor. And, well, I, it, it isn't the OC he uses on Equestria Daily. So I know if I had been there and if I had one, I couldn't use my hippogriff. Oh, you use clutter step. I would would sooner die. Well, you don't want clutter step. Well, 
that would just raise even more questions. I think Hasbro by I think it's almost by law that they have to make the OC. Not by law, I should say, but it's just for safety's sake. They design an OC from scratch. Well, you, you could just give them a description of how said pony's going to look like, and they work it out. I Again, I, I feel like they're playing it safe. I don't think it's that simple. Eh, probably. Maybe you can ask Illustrious Q about it one day. One day. Yeah, and then you can report it back to us and see how it goes. But anywho, I'm uh, talking about... Um, your friend, uh, Trusty Splendor, um, it seems that he's sitting in the same table with Silverstream and she's doing crossword puzzles. And Cozy helps her and stuff, so yay. Oh yes, a seven-letter word for teamwork. Slavery. S-L-A-V-E-R. Yay, it works! <laughs> I know, that's what makes it so scary. And that's what Cozy's thinking. You you can say synergy all you want, but we know what she's thinking on the inside. Behind those those adorable eyes likes the looks the mind of a hey, sociopath. Silver, it's not nice. It's it's not right to judge a book by its cover. Oh, it's not right to judge her. She did nothing wrong. Oh, we're playing this game, are we? <laughs> yes. Yes we are. <laughs> Cozy did nothing wrong. Sure. Ha- hashtag baloney. <laughs> But anywho, Cozy meets up with Twilight, hands her a mail, and Twilight is um a bit of a frizzle because, oh no, I'm late for my field trip with the kids and students. Oh, I need to pack, I need to pack. And Cozy just says, oh, it's cool, um, hit my Twilight. I handled it already. I asked Professor Rainbow Dash to cover for you, and I color code and index everything that you need to do for the day. And... Cool. And Twilight just says, wow, Cozy, thank you so much. You, like, you're my right hoof mare. I don't know what i do without you. You're about to find out. <laughs> True. that. But before we proceed, I, I have to put a footnote here and ask, who in the right mind would allow a filly to become this entrenched in schoolwork? Well... It's Equestrian. Equestria has very different ideas of rules. The Crusaders have been referred to as professionals before. Think about that for a minute. They've been consulted by, they've served as consultants to adults. But the thing with that one is, it's their special talent. Their talent is to um, consult ponies about cutie marks. The thing is that that's their talent. That's, their, that's what they're known for. And you could also say, oh, um, this one rich pony wants to build a gar- garnet statue of something. They'll probably ask that one pony kid with the chisel thing. You remember that one? Well, then, chi- but then child labor laws are non-existent. And who's to say that Cozy's organization school isn't part of her chess abilities, even though she makes a lot of rook mistakes? <laughs> I-, I don't know. I don't know. But still. I get uh, it. Get <laughs> it. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, no, but, hey, but still, hey, hey. <laughs> but, but still, um, I just have to ask, like, normally, even in anime, students won't get this much power. You clearly have never watched Kill a Kill. Uh, that is a totally different story. That is totally different. Like, or Tenjo or Tenge. But, oh, yeah. You know what? Let's move on. <laughs> I know, because if you're looking for realism and you cite anime, you're going to have a bad time. Okay. You're going to have a really bad time. Yeah, let's move on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Norman. It's a bad time. Bad time. Yeah, I'm feeling it. So, anywho, um, we join our field trip group, uh, Professor Rainbow Dash, talking about um, all, everything that comes from the sky comes from Cloudsdale. <laughs> um, was it? Or the Rainbow Factory or Cloudsdale? But long story short, it's just a tour of the Rainbow Factory or the Cloudsdale Factory. And I noticed that Scootaloo is nowhere to be seen as they talk about the Rainbow Factory. Why? Coincidence? <laughs> no. That, yeah. that, that fanfic is bad. Bad silver. Bad. At the Rainbow Factory, uh, where all your fears reside. Uh, I actually don't know the song. I, it was earlier in the fandom. Yes. But anywho... Um, we get to see the other students and the lecturers and whatnot. And we see Starlight explaining to the other students about 
um, her magic and using it to walk on clouds and stuff because some of the students don't have the ability to fly. So we get to see Sandbar jumping on clouds, Yona and other students. Much cool. Though I kind of wonder, uh, they never say if, if changelings can do this. Yeah, that's that's and, that's a yeah. You, you, I have to agree because um, the way that they interact, it seems like Ocellus was amazed by the whole thing. And yet, it seems to be a general rule that if you have wings, you can stand on clouds. Mm. But uh, Ocellus, either she never tried, or maybe uh, Chingzings are the exception to the rule. Probably. Either way, it is, it is fun, and you know it, this is harkening back to season one. Continuity. I know, I know. And <laughs> um, we we see that Gallus here is just like teasing Yona about looking at the edge, and you know if you have vertigo, that is going to scare you. Yep, but uh, as much as Gallus has, has won me over as a character, he's still tempted by Griffin Stone's attitude. Yeah. But still, it's kind of enduring. That's kind of his shtick, you know? Actually, I find his shtick is being super smart but not wanting anyone to know it. Probably, probably. He and Ocellus are both the eggheads of the group. <laughs> one's book smarts, one's street smarts. True that. But let's carry on. And we can talk about characteristics in the second part of this. But anyway, um, Yona tries to go to the edge and falls. Like she falls like a dead dead weight. <laughs> so did you have to say dead weight? <laughs> Why? Because she's about to be dead. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> so anywho, um, it seems that everybody who's not a flyer falls. Oh no! So um, Rainbow Dash comments or Rainbow Dash tells everyone to go save everyone. And we get to see a scene where Rainbow Dash swoops in, saves um, Starlight, and we get to see that pink Pegasus that uh, Yona was clinging on save another pony and so on. But they save Yona last, which in my eyes is like being picked for a uh, sport last. It's just this bitter feeling of rejection. It's like, we're only saving you because there's no one else to save. Oh, <laughs> you villains. Yeah, but still, um, Osiris just tells Yona that, Yona, you like flying, remember? Yeah, flying, not falling. <laughs> it's hard to argue with her logic. True that. So they go back to the school and tells Twilight about it. And Rainbow Dash comes in and just says, Yo, student almost died. Wah! And Twilight's surprisingly chill about this. Yes, indeed. And Twilight just asks, like, what happened? And... Toilet and just started just says, my magic like it it died like I was casting it and then suddenly it got nullified like I I don't know what happened and Toilet just says, I just don't know what went wrong <laughs> uh, um, and Toilet just says oh Starlight maybe you just got the spell wrong <laughs> and then we get the most epic of frowns <laughs> from Starlight that it's a look that says. I'm going back to villainy, and you're on the list. <laughs> yes, yes. And Star Starlight is just like, for realsies, I, I can match you on magic skills alone. And you're saying I got that wrong? Like, <laughs> we we'll, we'll, wait and see, wait and see. So Twilight never takes a book, and it falls on the ground. And Twilight just says, uh, wait, I, I didn't. <laughs> How did that happen? Like, I, I didn't know. What? And Starlight just says, maybe you cast the spell wrong. <laughs> Come back. Yes, karma. Uh, as the song go, payback is... That's not a word. Hey, hey, payback is... That's not a word. <laughs> uh, Sweetie Boy's going to get some extra work today. Well, she, she can deal with it. But I'm just going to press forward for a bit because we get other ponies come in. Uh, Fluttershy Rarity comes in um, saying that, oh no, things are really going wrong and Spike comes in with a letter that they need everyone to go to Canterlot so they do in Canterlot we get to see the main six plus Spike and Starlight and Cadence reporting on what's going on and it seems that the Crystal Heart is working well and 
Luna just says that um, raising the moon, or was it setting the moon, whatever it is, uh, is a hard task for her now. Well, honestly, I, I think the crystal heart is working, but not well. It's starting to drain. Which, given that thing is, like, the most unreliable in MacGuffins, I'm sorry, but th- that thing breaks that thing breaks easier than an Xbox. Oh, burn. Sick burn. But before that, uh, we got a male mare come in. Um, not dirt people, unfortunately. And it's from Starswell the Bearded. And Starswell says that it seems that all the magic in Equestria is being drained. And uh, first, it's going to be unicorn magic. Then, it's going to be pony ability, was it? First, it's pony abilities. Uh, then it's magical artifacts, and then on the on, by the setting of the third day, all magic in Equestria will disappear. Mm, so yeah, that, that's bad. That's really bad. And you need to gasp dramatically with each revelation. You know, it's like ah, ah, the horror! Oh, the horror! A disaster! A horrible, horrible disaster! All of them kind of points the finger or points the hoof at Tirek, asking. Could he be responsible for it? And Celestia and Luna task Twilight with checking it out. I don't think they... Well, yeah, they do go to Tartarus. That's right. It was Cozy Glow who, who planted the seed of this idea. You might say it was her sedition. <laughs> she she did mention it beforehand. Like, oh, um, didn't we uh, didn't we learn a villain by the name of T T something T T T something I don't know that sucks power or sex magic and they say oh T T T T T T T T T T T T T yes so anywho uh, Twilight says okay me and my friends are gonna go to Tartarus and we're gonna check it out and see how it goes so they pack up their bags and get ready to go Cozy Glow packed lunch for everyone and make sure everyone is all set on their adventure. But she didn't count on Starlight staying behind taking care of her school. And Cozy says, you know what? Um, maybe I can take care of... Maybe I can be Starlight's uh, right hand mare or right hoof or something. So yay, let me help you our heroes go off and in the next scene we see that Starlight is joining them like we didn't really see her go it's just Cozy telling us that she's off to join Twilight and her friends because she feels like Twilight needs a lot of help and sir what she really wrote was I must go my planet needs (laughs) oh Bucci (laughs) no Bucci and it's just like, and I totally haven't been kidnapped and imprisoned. Wait, why would I even write that? LOL, JK, JK. <laughs> but then we get the weirdest line in this entire episode. Mm-hmm. where When Smolder raises some uh, uncertainty, some issues, Cozy is, is immediately, oh, we're not scheming dragons, we're ponies. Just like, that is so speciesist. Oh, I, I mean, it's... it's uh... How are you even letting her get away with that? The entire school body should be like, whoa, not cool, dude. But Not cool, bro. Yeah, but, um, I mean, um, Co- Cozy is just young. She 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 don't know better. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, no, we're not making excuses for this. She done said something terrible. She must be punished. Destroyed. No, she's, she's too young. But you're not defense, um, Smolder, on her actions because Cozy... Uh, said that oh you scheming dragon um as uh, as punishment i'm gonna give you extra friendship homework and yona goes to her defense and so does everyone uh gallus begrudgingly agrees so yay (laughs) but anywho uh, after everyone dismissed we get to see the main crew um they're off on their adventure going to tartarus and rarity is not having any of it because there's flies everywhere and she doesn't have her magic to shoo them away and Twilight suggests have you use your tail to shoo them and Rarity gasps oh no my tail is only for accessories darling and funny enough a lot of a lot of what we're seeing here harkens back to season one short tails are in I'll never let it go (laughs) 
Yeah. And ba- baked bads. Oh, wow. Yeah. But. And Pinky still eats it, though. Oh, yeah. But she finds it um, horribly disgusting later on. But here's one of the cool things that I noticed in this short scene where with magic being gone, a lot of things are in a state of chaos because um, you could say that previously ponies use a lot of magic in their daily life from their daycare f- to their food where they mentioned that um, the cupcake got turned bad because it's not chilled or cold. There's no um, cooling spell to make it not go rotten or go bad fast. Yeah, like in the real world. I, I kind of love that there's, I like that this is showing how magic is infused in everything, mm-hmm. even just food preparation. Goodness knows how much magic goes into Applejack cider. Oh yeah, true that. But uh, but I do also find it funny. It's like the Earth ponies who have all the solutions. Oh, your horn ain't working well. Welcome to every day of my life, sugar cube. <laughs> oh boys, but anywho, you're dealing with Earth pony life, Southside. <laughs> But anywho, um, as they go on, it starts to rain and Applejack says, you know what, you got to do things the old pony way. So rub this apple jam sauce, whatever it is on your face to make the flies go away. And Rainbow Dash says, you know, I can't bust the clouds like a solo. But what I can do is fly up, grab a cloud and use it as a big giant umbrella. So let's go. So off they go. And here's where... Th- I start to say very bad things about ponies. Oh. One, the homework party with the student six back at the school. Mm-hmm. All the other students are talking about how great Cozy is because she gets them stuff. Mm. Friendship, remember kids, friendship can be bought. Oh, yeah, don't you know Kaiba does that? Actually, I don't buy friends. I just buy away their ability to live. <laughs> I, it's a good time. Yeah, see? Kaiba. Oh. <laughs> uh. But still, um, we, we get to see three fillies talking about how cool Cozy is because um, she made them muffins or big goods and gave them friendship bracelets and whatnot. And they say that um, uh, they don't mind her being in charge for a while. And Sandbar just says, um, what about Hitmare Twilight? And they say, oh, Hitmare Twilight is cool, but if she doesn't come back soon, it's not that bad. And Sandbar goes to the library to meet up with his friends. And they say, yo, bro, why are you late? And Sandbar just says, "Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, Cozy gave us all tickets to go see Sapphire Shores performing in Ponyville. Was it, right? Sapphire Shores, right? Yep. It's the, that may be the last time we ever hear her name uttered. Oh, true that. And I, I, what do I think? Like, Gallus says, like, hmm. Doesn't this seem strange? Like she's buying everybody's affection? Well, no one's no one's questioning it. That's the thing. Yeah, it's, it's like my friendship is not for sale. <laughs> but Osana brings something up, which is maybe she's doing this because um, to calm everybody down because of the panic. You know, like magic's gone, so to keep everybody's mind at ease, fun stuff. You know. Yeah, keep them distracted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But. So Smolder just says, I don't trust that pony with her big eyes and her poofy mane. I, I don't trust her. And Yona just says, why is Cozy coming out from the catacombs? That's not right. Let's let's go spy on her. Let's go. And we're about to enter a dungeon crawl. Yep. But before that, we go to the main six as they arrive to the door of hell. <laughs> Literally. Not kind of. I, I, I don't know. Tartarus is hell in Greek mythology, right? Yes, and there's a oh, there's a poem that has the line, "Your insight serves you well." Beyond lie the gates of hell. Mm. But anywho, who was it? Where's that from, by the way? I don't know. It was part of a typing class. Oh, okay, I was a part of. And yes, learning to type is a hell. Of a sort. <clears throat> yeah, but if you're playing Typing of the Dead, it'll be a lot of fun. I'm just doing a little search on that. But this here's where I go just a little crazy. Oh, okay. Because, all right, the, the ponies can't get in because they don't have unicorn magic, which 
pretty big oversight on Twilight's part. I know. We're here. We can't get in. True, true. But cozy, but cozy packed. What is it? The key of, the key of all access. Unfettered entrance. Un- unfettered, unfettered entrance. You got it. And I'm just. Why does this thing exist? People want to lock their doors for a reason. They need privacy. You do not get to have an all-purpose skeleton key for everything. But, Silver, here's the thing. Um, the way that the key is designed, it looks like it was meant to be um, used for the door. Ah, uh, but they say it's a key that can open any door. Mm, probably. But I do like Pinky's idea, though, because it does work. What, the pizza delivery? No, just knocking on the door. Just imagine, you go, you know, D and D party. You ha- you discover a locked door, and just knock it. Like the other, Actually, the other side won't really know. <laughs> the other side got no idea what's going on, so they have to open it. Honestly, I'm thinking more of a Skyrim. You just bang on a wall. Look, I know the secret entrance is is right here. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> No, come on. I know that you're the final boss. Why not just let me in and let's do this? Oh, you have to go away the long way. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm just going <laughs> to kill all your skeletons. No, you won't. Oh, just just type in Tilda. Uh, no clip. <laughs> but anywho, getting back on track. Uh, after the key's been used, it kind of vanish. Poof. And I have no, I have no problem with this. It. You can say that Tennis um, did something with it. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm just saying that that key shouldn't have existed in the first place. Uh, all access pass? Oh, that needs to be this doesn't exist, man. But anywho, as they go in, they discover a cockatrice. No, don't look at it. You'll tend to stone. Except for Fluttershy. We've seen her take these things down. Yeah, and it seems that there's a plethora of creatures in here. The really bad ones that kind of threaten Equestria. And I have to ask um what what what's going on oh it's easy celestia decided to clean house if you if you threaten a pony you go to tartarus like that uh yeti creature from outside yakakistan Mm -hmm. went after pinky boom tartarus bugbear invades ponyville boom tartarus what about the mole creature well you know, everyone wants to hide hide an embarrassing hole. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, Chimera, yeah. Threat, tried to eat Apple Bloom. Oh, you're definitely going to Tartarus. Well, what about that um, um, lion, scorpion, bird thing? The Manticore. Oh, Manticore! You know about my sister's misdeeds. I'm sorry. Have you ever heard of the Count of Monte Cristo? Oh, God, no. Ease. There's a lot of questions with this. Like I. When I first saw this, I was like, wait, what? That's not right. Oh, Celestia is cleaning up Equestria. We're going to make Equestria great again. Oh, God. But <laughs> We're going to build a wall. T- talking about making uh, Equestria great again, we get to see Chancellor Naysayer, the villain. Oh! Yes, he has a talent for making everyone a- angry at him. Though, I just came back from a convention with Maurice LaMarche. Oh, do tell. And he is, well, I managed to get a quick hello, shake his hand, and thank him for all the work he's done. He's a wonderfully friendly guy. Mm, that's cool. So, so I feel kind of bad that he's he's voicing this character that everyone's mad at. But he himself is a wonderful person. But that's the nature of the business, where uh, you may be the sweetest teddy bear, but in show business or in the ring or in the booth box, whatever it is, you're the meanest, baddest person. Grr. Well, tell that to poor Vincent Tong. He keeps getting characters that people don't like. V- Vinny, Vinny can do no wrong, man. I like Vinny. Vinny's awesome. Well, there you go. He played Mega Man. He played Mega Man, but he also played... Uh... What was his name? Daniel and Voltron Force? Voltron Force. Oh, that's an old one. It's an old one, and even he said that show was awful. <laughs> oh, man. Because it was. That was sad. Oh, by the way, I finally found that uh, Yonder Light the Gates of Hell. Ah. How did it go? 
your you conjecture well, yonder is the gate of hell. This is from Hellgate by A. E. Houseman. Ooh. So you have to type all that in? I had to type out his poem oh. and given that it was it's a not a super long poem, but I'm wasn't a super fast typist. Ah, all right then. But didn't people do the quick brown fox jump over the lazy dog kind of thing? Oh come on, that's that's like when you're first learning what a keyboard even is. Yeah, but that covers all of the alphabets, right? Mm, well, not all of them. I don't see a Q in there. Quick. Oh, wait, quick. But what about a fox? Yep. Actually, that would be impressive. I have never counted if all of them. Yeah, if I remember right, like that phrase there, the quick brown fox jump over the lazy dog, uh, covers all of the 25, 26 or 25 uh, letters in the... Um, English alphabets. Ah, uh, yes, but then, does it prepare you for keyboard commands where you wear out Control-C, Control-Z? Macro God, keys. I wish life... Macro keys, man. I wish I wish life had an undo button. Oh, yeah, true that. You know what? I wish life has a copy-paste. You know you can copy-cache and then paste it. <laughs> and then, then you hit Control-Z because you know... Uh, because you know you're going to get sued for this. Oh, yeah, true. But what you can do is control C on a rare magic card and then sell it off. Oh, Norman, you fraud. Hey, it's not fraud if it's an original copy. Oh, original copy. Ah, hey. ah, ah. But anywho, let's join, let's join back our po- with our ponies. The main six goes looking around in Tartarus and they discover um, Cerberus. Yay! Okay, how do you pronounce that? You Do you say... Uh, Cerebus or Cerebus? I say Cerberus. That's what I've known for most of the time. Mm, true that, true that. I remember Caesar being Kaiser from what I heard. Ah, that's what said. Uh, everyone's got 50 different ways to pronounce the same thing. Mm. But Cerberus it is. I've never heard anyone say tomato. Tomato? Well, they they say there's tomato, tomato, but I've never heard tomato. Okay, um, Silver... Come, come down to Malaysia, and you'll hear everybody say that word. That, that, uh, hear people say that fruit that way. Aha! Uh-huh. It's kind of the ABCs and how we pronounce them. I see. Mm-hmm. But anywho, carrying Very on. Excellent. Carrying on. We get to see Cerberus, and Fluttershy talks to him, uh, needing to go and see um, Lord Tirek. And they see the creepy old man in there. Ugh. Oh, I love it. Silence of the Lambs. Hello, Clarice. <laughs> and then they confront T-Rex and ask him, okay, you're, you're responsible for this. We know it. Like, how, how did you do it? And who, like, how? Who, who's involved? And when T-Rex was about to say something, they reveal it was Naysayer. Grr, he's evil. Is he? I mean, he makes it very clear that he's he's come to the school to warn Twilight. And now he finds her gone, which, unfortunately, Season 8 really legitimized a lot of his criticisms of Twilight. True, but at the same time, too, okay, in defense of Twilight here, she did want to close down the school and send every student back home. But Starlight says, nah, no problem. No problems, Twy. I, I got this. Me, Starlight. I'll take care of the student. I'll take care of the school. After this court, this is just easy. And yet later she'd cite how bad things went when Discord was around. And she was the head mayor. So, there's just no winning with this mayor. Uh, true that. But anywho, uh, Chancellor Naysayer says, Okay, you know all these non-ponies? You know them? The non-ponies? We're going to throw them out. We're going to lock them up. They're responsible for the magic green being gone in Equestria, yes, and we're going to lock them up, yes, and we're going to put them in jail and stuff, yes, and... It's fantastic. <laughs> That's my pony. <laughs> yes. So, anywho, uh, they hear some arguments and they find the main, or uh, the student six outside arguing and stuff, and Chancellor Naysayer chain them up with magic from her magic talisman. He does realize that Silverstream is related to the Hippogriff royalty, and he just basically assaulted a royal. Not Pony doesn't care. <laughs> oh, he should. He's become an international incident. Not Pony. I mean, just wait until the, just wait until the Mueller report. Oh no, we no no Pony don't care. And talking about don't care, 
Sand Bar just says, Chancellor Nay say, I hate this non-pony creatures. I do not want to uh, be associated with them anymore. Let me out. Mm, harumph. Oh, throw them away. Oh. And with that, Chancellor Nay says, Good, good cult. Ah, you have seen the error of your ways. Now join me in gloating and making Equestria great again. Mm. Well, there you go. I mean, that's all you can really say. <laughs> all he needs to do is wear, uh, what would you call it? Mega hat. Make Equestria great again. A mega hat. Oh, wow. oh goodness. You know, how mega, could you... Mega, wait. How could you... Put a mega hat on sandbar. It's perfect. How could you... Like, the way I explain it sounds terrible, but how could you take this guy seriously? God damn it. You can't take... It. Well, we're... Unfortunately, America, we're in a situation where we do take these guys seriously. Oh, <laughs> but anywho. And unfortunately, they have too much of a say. That's as political as I'm going to oh, get. Boy, but anywho, we see that it was all an act. Senbar was just pretending so he could ask help from the CMCs. And by uh, asking for help by throwing apples and also flowering can or watering can and probably an anvil and a cow later on. Oh, good. Yeah, this begs the question, how strong does Sandbar think he is? Like, are we dealing with Mod Pie levels of strength here? Got no idea, man. They're milk ponies. But to be honest, we're not seeing Sandbar's true form. Oh, great. He's going full shaggy. <laughs> like, this isn't even my final form, man. Uh, let's get away from that dead meme. Oh, the dead meme, he says. It is alive and well, as long as I make the jokes. <laughs> but anywho, we go back to the main six. And the main six just straightforward and ask okay you got a guy from the inside who who is it like who is helping you drain the magic out of equestria and Tirek just says since you're stuck here with me i might as well tell you and the pony that's helping me is before we get that revelation we hear sandbar scream oh no cozy glow cozy glow went into the catacombs um after she left the office, we got to chase her down and tell her or ask her help to distract Chancellor Nese and stuff. So they go in and before they can go find Cozy Glow, they see something strange like this rune circle with some artifacts around it and starlight floating about. Oh no. And... People will still complain there's too there's still too much starlight in this episode. <laughs> They'll just be like, oh, why does she have to be such a perfect hostage? But what? She didn't say anything. Oh, that just makes me more mad. Grr. But anywho. Um, it's, it, it's, it's starlight. You're, di you're cursed if you do, cursed if you don't. But it seems that we get to see... Um, Starlight being trapped. So, oh no, the threat is in the school, but who could have done this? Oh, it's Cozy Glow. She's going to save Starlight, right? Oh, Norman, bless your innocent heart. What, why? Because if you didn't know that there's something wrong with her the first moment you laid eyes, then you're far too trusting for this world. Too pure, too innocent. Stay off the internet. <laughs> oh no, it, it's, it, tell me it ain't true. I could tell you, but I'd be lying. And you'd believe me because you're so trusting. <laughs> oh, no. And it seems that Cozy, that innocent face, is the villain. Oh, no. Okay, you know what? No, 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 no. I, I don't believe this. I I don't believe this. Like, um, she's spinning around, doing monologues. Like, it has to be Chrysalis. It has to. Oh, now, now you're just uh, <laughs> trying to follow DWK. No, <laughs> no but seriously, um, um, first impressions of this... I thought she was Chrysalis. The signs were there. What, was there a big sign that said, I'm Chrysalis? Kind of, like, um, get in, intertwine with all that needs to be, you know, like, classic changeling tactics. Um, get in, get deep, get information, get stuff, and then, um, take over and whatnot. The signs were there, but nope. I, I feel like Chrysalis really isn't that good an actor. She, uh, even when she was impersonating the photography pony, she was not so subtle in her hostility. True, but I don't know. Like, 
the, it's like, mm, I, I don't know. I mean, it feels like it could be Chrysalis here. I mean, DWK was playing it up for laughs, but it feels like it, man. Like, um, pushing Starlight into the bubble. Like, those are the things that Chrysalis would do. Take revenge, probably, and stuff. Well, who, who knows? But either way, it ain't Chrysalis. It's just Cozy, who's evil for reasons. True. But and we don't know why. No, we may never this, know. We kind of know. We kind of know. But let's but head into. How, how do we kind of know? Uh, what what possible reason does she have to want to become empress of friendship in a world without magic? I do not understand this this filly. I mean, but notes. Hmm? But notes. I acknowledge that I don't understand why. I'm curious, but I'm still having fun with her. Oh, true, true, true. Because one, those scowls. The facial expressions on this filly are just uh, amazing. Yep. And the crew at DHX are just having fun with this. Like, they are pushing the envelope to make Hosey evil. <laughs> evil. She's really got the great m- maniacal laugh going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's only one way to make that la- laugh better. Ah-ha-ha. ah ha Ah, yes. Much better. But anyway, let's head into part two. And in the second part, the main six try to escape from Tartarus while Cozy Glow furthers her plot to take over the school of friendship with only the young six and the Kyrie Crusaders to stop her. Will they succeed? Will they fail? Join us next week for the young six and the Kyrie Crusaders stop Cozy Glow. Are we ending the, this review there? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just a Dragon Ball reference. Remember that thing? <laughs> Boys. Uh, boys. But anywho, so yes, um, let's head into part two. So, after Twilight being startled and shocked to her core that Cozy Glow, that innocent pony, is the one responsible for this, and is kind of in the school of friendship, and is probably burning amok, she panics and tries to go out. And Applejack says, you know, Sugar Cube, don't worry, Starlight's there with her. Um, if any pony could handle cozy it'll be starlight <laughs> oh yes i'm sure she'll have no trouble taking on a filly yep. you've all been outdone by a filly yeah. welcome to the new equestrius show are you smaller than a filly oh <laughs> trick question you're not <laughs> but anywho we get to see them try to escape but the door won't budge and twilight here has a brilliant idea of borrowing the magic from every creature in tartarus including their captor, which we're about to reach Guantanamo levels of torture here. <laughs> I would say torture. Enhanced inter- enhanced interrogation. Well, let's put that aside because we still have Naysay and Cozy Glow tries to out him out of the office, but Naysay is not going to have nothing to do with it because he's going to stay and it's going to make the School of Friendship great again with the EEA way. Again, mega hats all around. Yep. <laughs> so, the Crusaders and Sandbar go up to the Rune Circle with Starlight in it, and the Crusaders try to save them, or save her. Um, Sweetie Belle steps uh, in the circle, and yeah, crazy hands grab all over her and tries to pull her in. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, I mean, let's be honest. You are you know that this is not a, uh, something natural because it has hands. <gasps> and in oh, this no. world, hands are the things of evil like the Storm King. True that. True that. And um, the Crusaders and Sandbar managed to pull uh, Sweetie Belle out before she gets trapped in. So they need to come up with a plan. And... Well, we put that plan on hold for a bit because we got to see the student six again or the student five as Gallus tries to open a door but failing. Oh no. Yes, he's the same problems as the aliens from Signs. It's a door. They, they can travel millions of miles but they're blocked by a door and there's a perfectly shatterable window right behind you <laughs> but those things must be bulletproof. Because apparently Twilight built these dorm rooms like a fortress. <laughs> okay, um, in the, in the defense I, for Gallus with the door, 
it could be one of those old fashioned doors where you you have to have a key to unlock it. Oh, you know what could also be what? a push door. He's pulling on it. Maybe it's a push door. No, I'm suddenly no. oh, I'm suddenly questioning if Gallus is really that. Uh, book smart or street smart because uh, uh, he's defeated we, we get by to the see, door. We, we get to see uh, in the previous episode where uh, Sandbar closed the door by pulling on it. So he closed the, that means it's a push door. No, it's a... <laughs> If he closed the door by pulling on it, you have to open the door by pushing on it. No, but he, Gallus, he pulled... <laughs> it's not even locked, I bet. I bet Gallus is just really bad with doors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I've killed Norman. I've killed Norman with my talk of doors. No. Now I now I'm questioning: Is the door a knob or a handle? I'll tell you who's a knob. <laughs> Gallus. I think you like for Gallus. pulling on a push door. What a knob head! It's a pull door. It pulls from the inside and pulls from the outside. I mean, that means it's two way swinging. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not how the doors work, Norman. <laughs> that's how a saloon door works. And a saloon door really isn't a saloon door. It's not really a door. It doesn't keep anything out. <laughs> although Gal- although Gallus might say, hey, I can't find the knob. How do I get into this place of refreshment? But he can't because there's no, there's no knob. Oh. Except him. My, my trust dead. But anywho. Oh, boys. But wee-oo, wee-oo, wee-oo. <laughs> wee-oo. But anywho, we get to see Gallus kind of piss um piss off and Ocellus thinking of a way out or stuff. I mean, they just argue and they think that Sandbar is not their friend anymore. Yona goes to Sandbar's defense saying that Sandbar is our friend. And Smallest just says, like, you forgot what he mentioned. He doesn't want anything to do with us. And Silverstream just says, probably he said all this thing because it was just a ruse so we can have a guy on the outside knowing what the hay is going on. And door or window cracks open and Sandbar just says, oh, I think that's too smart for a pony to say. And Yona tackles him. Uh, I ship it. Which given what, yeah, well, given what we hear of a summary later on the, uh, season nine. Yeah. Maybe this is where that relationship starts to flourish. Oh, boys, I I have not read any of the synopsis, so I'm blind. Uh, well, I'm, I'll say no more, except that Gallus still hasn't opened that door. <laughs> but anywho, um, everybody... And Sandbar has a crowbar. Sandbar has a crowbar. True that. Are those windows locked from the inside or the outside as well? See, this architecture makes no sense. <laughs> But the windows, like, you, you you want to know something, Silver? You want to know something? I bet the windows mm. are not even locked. That's just it. I bet the door isn't locked. No, the door's locked. The door's locked. <laughs> I, I'm I'm stepping my foot down on that. The window, on the other hand. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if I wanted windows this unreliable, I'd talk to Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> my throat's dying. Damn. But anywho, Sandbar tells everyone that Cozy Glow is evil and we need to go to Chancellor Nace to stop this. So in the morning, uh, Chancellor Nace goes up on the podium and tells every pony there that from this day onward, I will become hit, uh, hit stallion of this school and we are going to do things the EEA way. And suddenly, Cozy Glow comes in and reverse psychology on him and making everybody in the school attack him? What? Well, she would be great on social media. All all I'm going to say is she knows how to work the crowd. But the way... Okay, I'm going to be serious for a bit. And I'm not. (laughs) Cozy here is a manipulative genius using... Chancellor say Chancellor Naysayer's own words against him and to turn the crowd against him is genius. And not even letting him have a say in the matter. Oh my god, he she is wow, like pure evil. 
though we'll never know why. <sighs> that is true. Probably discussion for another time. Anywho, um, the students here uh, kind of go on Cozy's side because what Cozy just mentioned, I'm just going to summarize, is Chancellor Nay say wanted to close the school down before and now he's going to take over the school and he's not going to do it Twilight's way? Oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. Uh, he needs to go down. And so... Like Lord of the Flies. Yep. And so they chain him up in the chair and lock him out. Yeah, and Chen so they say like, just ask, like, why are you doing this? Like, I thought you wanted somebody in charge of the school. <laughs> and uh, she she just says, yeah, I, I do. I, I, I do. I understand. I do want someone in charge. But it's not you. I want to be in charge so I can have all of the friends and have all of the power. Ha 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 ha. And we get to see Chancellor Nacy shaking in his boots. All I want is for Tristan from, well, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge version to show up. But why? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you never know why, Tristan. So, but why? <laughs> so. Uh, we get this, so we get to see the CMC comes in and play distraction. And yeah, they do distract Cozy Glow for a bit. So we get to see the main, the student six, um, uh, try to help Chancellor Naysay. They do. And Chancellor say, Naysay just says, uh, why are you helping me? And they just say that, um, we're not jerks like you. And the situation here is bad and we need your help. Cozy Glow is the one doing all of this and we need somebody to do something. And Chancellor Ney says, oh, okay, let me use my magical medallion and I'll get help. Yes, th that's what I'll do. I'll get help. Yes. Okay, bye-bye. Yes, with it, with his satanic powers of tenure. <laughs> no, it's a portal to hell. It's still a portal to hell. Uh, Which some would say is higher education. <laughs> uh, boys. But well, anywho, Osiris says, "Oh, I hope he comes back." And Sandbar, sorry, uh, and Smolder just says, "I hope he doesn't." And everybody is in agreement and stuff. Like right? they, they, yeah, they just hope for the best for now. And back in Tartarus, uh, it seems that everybody is working out a plan and whatnot, and. They're just getting everybody in the plan, including T-Rex. And T-Rex just says, okay, I'll help you. Just get the pink one away from me. Like I'm saying, this is this is enhanced interrogation. I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. <laughs> Are you referencing the one? Uh, no, this was uh, Watchmen. Oh, really? No. Because I remember that um, phrase also being uttered in Jet Li's The One. Well, let's see. Uh, I am Eula. I'm not your. Well, <laughs> I'm about to invoke. I'm about to invoke Sweetie Bot here. Uh, are you going to do it or not? No. Oh, 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 oh! oh. The gauntlet is thrown. I'm just asking. I'm not your. That's not a word. You are my. That's not a word. <laughs> yep, Sweetie Bot's going to do a lot of work. <clears throat> <clears throat> I mean, here I was trying to give you an e an easy out and one less thing to do, but oh no. You were like, oh, you got to do it or what? <laughs> Sil oh, what? Silver, uh, if the audience know what happened today, uh, today's recording is just topsy to be upside down. <laughs> but, Indeed, everything's a little crazy, mm -hmm. but we're carrying mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you, you want to know what? Like, I, I find it funny that Pinkie Pie still has her fourth wall breaking power. And you want to know what is more crazy <laughs> if she just uh, goes to uh, girls off screen to grab something from um, Sugar Cube Corner and comes back to the scene and like the others will look at her and says Pinky where did you get that and she says oh Sugar Cube Corner and you could do that the whole time and not bring us along well okay just imagine for a moment if Twilight tried to copy Twi uh, Pinky's fourth wall powers do you have any idea how much reality would break from the main six the thing is not everybody can um, hold the fourth wall breaking powers. Uh, remember that one joke character from uh, Dragon Ball Z? No, uh, Super Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super. That one special episode where they referenced Dr. Slump. 
Yes, and Vegeta can't beat characters from a gag manga. Yay! <laughs> See? That's what wall breaking there. But it's Vegeta, the prince of all Saiyans. I am the gr- prince of fourth wall breaking. Move aside, pink one. <laughs> I doubt it. But anywho, uh, Tirek is in, and we see that Cozy Glow knows that she's being distracted, and um, she locks the CMC up in a closet. I wonder when they're going to come out. They're going to come out of the closet? Oh, my. Norman, how could you? <laughs> what well, is true. They're trapped in a broom closet. And they're like, we aren't coming out of the closet. Okay. Now I'm getting kind of mad. <laughs> so I pull out my gun. <laughs> Actually, well, I feel bad for the CMC. They've they've been betrayed completely, and to my knowledge, we have we aren't going to cover the repercussions of this betrayal. Normally, when you get when you suffer a betrayal, you have to deconstruct your life and figure out how you missed this, and then integrate that so you can become better and not make the same mistake again. We won't get to see them do that, though. I, I don't know. I mean, by this point. The CMC already know that Cozy is just evil and they're playing the distraction. But they're also the ones who helped her get into the School of Friendship. Oh, man. And I, I think we're just going to hold this off until we reach discussion because there is a lot of there, there is a lot to break down here. Oh, break it down. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. But anywho, um, we go to the Student 6 and they are going to the caverns and... Their logic is that we can't wait for Chancellor Nasir to get help. We need to do something. Um, we need to get Starlight free. Uh, she's the she's the pony that can stop Cozy. So they go there and they discover the artifacts. And those artifacts are from their history lesson and whatnot. And Galaxy just says, "Hey." This items are from chapter twelve, blah 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 blah, and everybody looks at Gallus like, wait, what? Since since when? And Gallus says, "There's finals, like finals getting closer." I, I study, you know. Well, you know what you should really study for door opening one hundred and one. <laughs> it's not that bad. Oh yeah, yeah. But anywho, he's a knob. <laughs> Come on, he's he's good bird boy, cat bird boy. Uh, but anywho. Also, let's say something about all this uh, artifact here. Like, I think Cozy could have supercharged them to magnetize all of the magic in Equestria, and that's why what that's what's happening here. So that's bad. And Smolder just says, "Okay, if we yank them, um, that means uh, things be gone, right? Like things go back to normal." And Osiris just says. Oh no, um, I'm not 100% sure. If we do that, probably we'll do an implosion so magic will never come about at all. And timing, because Cozy comes in and cuts them red-handed and she sicks the ponies on the student six. Oh no. And they're all fine with this because, again, their loyalty is easily bought. Yeah, like, no, that's not good. I mean, if it's like I said, Norman, hey, I got you tickets for your favorite band. Now go kill in my name. <laughs> yeah, come on. Let's do this. Wow. I didn't didn't think that would actually work. <laughs> I think you're just looking for an excuse to kill everybody. Oh, uh, Silver, I'll do anything for you. <laughs> well, now, you learned something new today. Something terrifying. <laughs> but anyway, we go back to Tartarus. And the motion is set. Twilight absorbs all the magics from the um, creatures, monsters, whatever you want to call them, and opens the door. By the way, um, the magic that Twilight is absorbing is given willingly. And these creatures are themselves magical. Yes, yes, indeed. Because then they divide into... And we get to see a panda bear. It's so cute. Hello, panda. So, okay, let's just break it down for a bit. We get to see a lion, scorpion, panda, bee, ram, or goat. Wait, wait, you're right. We get to see a lion, a tiger, and a panda bear. Oh, my. Hmm. I wonder, what's that about? Have you never seen The Wizard of Oz? I see lion, panda, no. Panda bear. Panda bear? Lion? Who's panda bear referencing to? 
Well, th- that's from the bugbear. No, no, no. You're saying Wizard of Oz. Yeah, lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my, right? <laughs> oh, man, I'm forgetting a lot of stuff. Got no. Oh, no, but it, it's an American classic. Oh, right. <laughs> Good thing I'm Malaysian. Woo! But it... Yes, yes, we'll work, to, we'll work on that. I, I feel The Wizard of Oz is approachable in many ways. Oh, true that. I've I seen Dorothy clicking her hoofs and whatnot. So, anywho, um, uh, Twilight uses the magic that she absorbs to open the door and they escape Tartarus, but it may be too late because it's already sunset and she's not coming around to help them. Oh no. Curses. Yes. So Twilight might have failed. But we go back to the young six. So the young, uh, sorry, yeah, the young six. So they confront Cozy and tells or tries to reveal the truth that you're the one responsible for this. You're the one that trapped Starlight in there and you're the one absorbing the magic. And Cozy just says, Who? Me? Oh, no, no, no. Everybody knows, sorry, every pony knows that you creatures want to take away all of the magic because that's what makes us ponies special. And you can, and you're jealous because of that. Yeah, we can have that, can't we? And Ocelot just says, You know, the changeling transformation and Silver Stream's transformation does involve magic. Well, who knows? Maybe changelings are losing the ability to shapeshift. I mean, she doesn't attempt that this episode. Oh, true that. Yeah, that's true that. We didn't really get to see that. Hmm. But anywho, we see that the student's student body is taking down the creatures, and one of them it kind of hurled Gallus to a select height and slams heart as he falls into the blue bubble thingy. Yep, not a good day for Gallus. He's just, he's having a bad go all around. Yep, and everybody tries to sort of save him from the bubble thingy. And then they all get caught in the bubble thingy, so they're all like starlight. And the worst part is they definitely can't get out because there are no doors. Oh, no. And or windows, <laughs> and one pony just says, "Like, wait, what? They just sacrifice themselves to save their friend." And um, according to Professor Rainbow Dash, uh, doing that makes you loyal, something blah blah blah. And yeah, like, shouldn't we help them? And Cozy Glow just says, "The elements of harmony is more of a reference rather than a rule." So let's get out of here. Even the tree of harmony won't save them. <laughs> Well, truth be told, the Tree of Harmony has been dragging its heels pretty pretty <coughs> slow on this entire adventure. I mean, it's happening right at its roots. True that, true that. But anywho, talking about the Tree of Harmony, it somehow helps the Student Six. And, oh my goodness, it imbues them with the power of the Elementals. Or the Elements of Harmony, yes. And what, I think the last time when we talked about this, uh, we mentioned that, hey, um, the student six got glowy powers from the harmony thing. Like each student has, represents a color or something. And what do we came up with? We tried to pair them up with, uh, their mentors, so to speak. Yeah. And I, I think I got it because, um, I think Yona is honesty. Uh, yep. Silverstream is laughter. Ocellus is generosity. Sandbar is kindness. Smolder is loyalty. And Gallus is doors. That's right. The knowledge of doors, <laughs> but it has escaped him. <laughs> you have failed to live up to your element. Yes. But yeah, um, Gallus is magic. So, oh my, that's very interesting. Like, the more I see it, right? the more I, I get it. Like, yeah, I, I can see it, really. Um, Gallus, not so much. I, I, I don't really get why he's magic. Maybe someone will explain to me later on. But anywho, let's let's wrap this up because um, they are free from the bubble and they decide to pull away the artifact. And Senbar tells everyone to get away as far as possible. And when they do... 
all of the accumulated magic dispersed and everybody got their powers back. Yay! Including Tyrek, who gets a magic to the face. Oh, shakalaka. I, I don't think it's his full powers. Just some of it. Meanwhile, I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, Celestia and Luna deployed the Royal Guard. They have a purpose. Finally. And yes, you see the full might of the school and the Royal Army and the sisters and the students all arranged against a filly. Yeah, that, that's what I'm going to say, man. Like, okay, um, I'm going to try and wrap it up fast. So... Um, Twilight and her group got magic back, so they teleported to the school. And Starlight is, is tar- Starlight's out, so they teleport out of school. And everybody's free. And Cozy Glow kind of loses it and stuff. And Applejack wants to know why she did this, and so does Twilight. And Cozy Glow gives the oddest explanation. And okay, here's the thing. I'm just going to summarize it. If I'm wrong, you correct me, Silver. But if I'm right, just agree or agree with me. So, Cozy, Cozy's brilliant plan here is to take over the school of friendship because she knows that friendship is power. With power, she can take over the world. So, by having a lot of friends, she has all of the power. So, by doing so, she can become the empress of friendship and have all of the power. Am I right? Yep, that's how it basically boils down. And I'll say this, Silver. What? That is... What? Well, it's a perversion of uh, of Twilight's teaching. It's, it's like, it's true that friends are a source of strength. And that if you can make connections, you can uh, be stronger. Yeah, but... Her logic here is by having a lot of friends on Facebook, I have all of the powers. Well, thankfully, ponies don't have Facebook, except when Twilight face plants into a book. But she would do well on social media, as I've said. Actually, it's funny. I uh, was rewatching some Game of Thrones clips last night, including an argument between uh, Renly and Robert. Oh. Where Renly said, you've never wanted friends, brother, but friends are how you achieve power. And now no one wants you as king. Like, well, <laughs> friendship is magic. <laughs> Brace yourselves, friendship is coming. <laughs> Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage. Uh, talking about Game of Thrones, did you see the one where um, the Peter Dinklage and the other one were talking, then suddenly Elmo came along? Yes, I, I did see. <laughs> Respect is coming. I, I, it's time. I, I, I was like, what am I watching? But anyway, it's back, adorable. I know, I know. So, back, back to ponies, back to ponies. So, um, Cozy just says, you know what? I'll come back even stronger with more friends than you, Twilight Sparkle and tries to escape. The student body says, uh uh-uh, uh, you're not gonna escape. You're, you're, you're not going anywhere, little one. She tries the other way. Luna, Celestia, and Nase are there. She tries to go to the sky. And the royal guards are there. Like, how do I put this? Overreacting much or over? Compensating. That's one word. But yeah, like, what? Why? What? Proportions, brothers and sisters. So yeah. Um, out of all of the episodes that we've seen, right? Out of all eight seasons, finally we get to see the royal guards in action against a little kid. What? Yeah, we're good at this. We're strong. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Cozy Glow is caught. So we join, well, Celestia Twi- and Twilight and also Nese. And Nese has clearly learned his lesson. And friendship is something that we need to share with other creatures because friendship is a powerful tool and needs to be shared. Yes. Yes, and that, and then the Crusaders are free, and everyone laughs at their betrayal and the fact that they spent an entire night uh, wondering if their world was going to end. <laughs> oh, but everyone still has trouble with doors. <laughs> but wait, the Crusaders got that door open. They won up Gallus. Yay! <laughs> but at the same time, too, um, our heroes here, 
sees that hey, um, why are the students six there? Why why are they in, uh, graduation robes? And um, who uh, Gallus Gallus logic uh, Gallus's logic here is <laughs> since we save Equestria, that means we're we ha- we can graduate from friendship school, right? And uh. Twilight Chancellor and AC and Celestia just laughs at them and like, ah, uh, how cute. If you want to be, if you want to graduate, you need to have eight seasons of this. <laughs> well, I don't know. Starlight graduated in just one season. She's still studying. Uh, but anywho, um, everybody laughs, everybody has a great time, and we go back to Tartarus where Cerebus is complaining to Tyrek and saying that, hey, it's boring here. And we get to see Luna come in. And, oh my, Luna with royal guards? Like, what? And we get to see them locking up Cozy Glow. Like, what? That's right. We Our first uh, unforgiven opponent is who is not killed is locked in Tartarus. Bit odd that she's a filly, but I'm sure we'll talk about that at us. Yeah, true that. But anywho, uh, with that, episode ends. And so does the season. So let's go to final thoughts. And Silver, what do you think, man? Well, this is enjoyable despite a great many questions. I didn't know I cared so much about doors until I realized how Gallus was faring. <laughs> oh, boy. But on the topic of Cozy Glow, there's two big things. The first is that, yes, I want to know why she is the way she is. There's a there's a plenty of tropes about, you know, the, the demon child or the child who looks all innocent but is really just the spawn of evil. But usually that's quite literal. The child is somehow connected to a much darker force. We don't get that here. As far as we know, Cozy Glow is just a filly. Nothing more than that. She's just a very manipulative filly. And so I actually agree with the decision to imprison her because she has very dangerous knowledge and has shown uh, unrepentance for her actions. But is there a me, is there a middle ground between letting them off scot free and banishing them to Tartarus? Cause I feel like we went from one to 10 rather fast. Yeah, I agree there, man. Like when I saw Cozy got ship to Tartarus, I was like, wait, what? That's a bit extreme, don't you think? But I have to also remember what she did, and yeah, it makes sense, but still. Well, I'm not entirely convinced Cozy is a kid. I know she protests this in Season 9, but I think that's a lie from her mouth. Probably, probably. Anything else? Just that it was fun. Uh, it is kind of s- funny that you could remove the main six's adventure to get out of Tartarus, and it wouldn't have an impact on the overall story. But at the same time, it's it's a different. We still get to see them in action and providing their own sense of humor. I laugh quite profusely when uh, Rainbow Dash plows into the uh, door and can't knock it open. Oh, some, something similar to season one. Honestly, I'm I'm now realizing the real enemy of this two parter was doors. <laughs> Oh, boys. Yes, doors. Ha 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 ha. Oh, boys. But as for me, I love this. I, um, I sound generic. Damn. Um, but I, I like this episode. I, I like this season finale. Um, I do love how they use characters. Like, I, I do love it. Like, um, splitting the party, um, party of six, um, to go one way and the other staying around and we get to see that okay twilight and her crew uh investigating like they're doing something they're doing something to solve the problem and we get to see the student six kind of stumble upon trouble like they're not fully aware or they're not fully in control of their destiny and whatnot and it does make sense because they're young. They've got no idea what's going on. And they are not looking for adventure. Adventure's looking for them. And yeah, like, the the interaction between all of the characters, like Sandbar um, denouncing their friendship and whatnot, like, oh, uh, why is he tra- uh, being a traitor? But you can see it coming from a mile away. Like, they don't even hide it. And it's a lot of fun. Like, it's a lot of fun. 
I, I do like the redemption arc for Nisei because it seems that he learned his lesson and I can't wait to see him more in the future and see how things go for him. And as for Cozy, dang, she is one bad girl. Don't know what to say. She is really bad. Probably later on in discussions. Yes. Well, we uh, we'll, we may never know why. That's the big thing. I like Cozy. I like that she's so manipulative. I like that she's an unexpected idea for a villain. You knew something was off when she was so formal in her diction uh, when she was first introduced. But there's always that question of why she is the way she is, and we may never get an answer, which is just frustrating. I, I kind of feel like I don't want to know the answer because I, I feel like if we do know the answer, it could cheapen her. Like, like either it's a home run or a strike. Like, what? Like, like it's either like, oh my god, this is genius, or, huh? This? Really? Oh my god, that's so dumb. But anyway, Silver, what are, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm guessing, uh, we, we already know what we're going to do next week, but I'm just going to humor the audience at home. So what are you going to do next week? Well, now that we finally cleared Season 8, it's time to talk about Season 8. So we'll do just a discussion about the whole season in general. Mm -hmm. Things that we like, things that we found annoying and whatnot, and how it kind of, well, progressed from the movie and whatnot. Like, I mean, there's a lot to unpack here, so we're going to try our best to make it a very interesting conversation. So anyway... If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nbsugmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at NBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me, one, at uh, Everfree Northwest in May. Uh, looking forward to that convention. Uh, you can also find me on the Twitters under MLP Silver Quill. Same for DeviantArt, as you can find me posting a Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight every Friday before a new episode. Uh, you can find me on YouTube. Just do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact. And every Wednesday, you can find me on Equestria Daily posting either a new comic review, a retrospective review, or an editorial. Though truthfully, I'm running, I'm just about out of back issues to review. Oh, yeah. The Fiendship is Magic is almost ending, so yeah. Fiendship is Magic number five. Uh, the annual that features the Power Ponies. And maybe a look back at Siege of the Crystal Empire one more time, but... That's it. Oh, wow. But anywho, yeah. Just just keep around, just keep an eye out and see what he comes up with. Probably do more. Who knows? Anyway, um, also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on ponyvalive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's already access to review and discussion podcasts exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me thinking about thank yous I'd like to thank Amy Lucky Knight Tristan Starstream Jeffrey and also myself like thank you so much guys you're great so anyway I have been Norman Sanzo I'm the Silver Quill and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show see ya look out for doors how does one operate a door well, there's this little thing because if push comes to pull, don't get it mixed up. Oh, okay. So I should bang on the door then. Why not? See if anyone answers. In which case, you better be careful if it's on the other side. Mm-hmm.